today I want to talk to you guys about this Javier Malay guy, but at the same time, I just want to share with you this glorious morning I'm experiencing. I just wanted to talk real quick. I'm not going to make this a super long walk and talk, but... And I guess I felt compelled to talk about this because it seems like a lot of people are falling for traps these days. I would say the last, well, I don't even need to go through them all. The, the last trap, definitely this switch that was flipped to light up the Palestinian-Israeli issue and divide uh, conservatives and liberals, actually. It divides a lot of people, that issue. But this one today is people are just falling for these bait and switches. And I can see it already coming with this Javier Malay guy. You know, this guy, he's got all the good rhetoric, right? He says all the things that sort of anarcho-capitalists or libertarian type people want to hear a politician say. You know, if you're a smart enough anarcho-capitalist or anarchist or libertarian, whatever, um, you don't fall for these things very easily because you don't put a lot of stock into political rhetoric. Because if you understand the state is just a monopolistic, it's a corporation with a monopoly on force and it uses force to push ideas, um, which means those ideas suck because if nobody does them voluntarily, they're obviously terrible ideas. But this Javier Malay guy, he's pumping all this good rhetoric that, that, that you know, we've heard Mises and Hayek and all the sort of classic uh, Austrian econ economics guys, even Thomas Sowell, he's got all the rhetoric. And so it's really sounds great and it's exciting for people. Um, but you don't have to dig very deep to find that the optics of this guy don't all look, look, look all that great. Okay. So I'm kind of, I put a thread about the, I, I, I put this up on Twitter and, uh, your guys' comments were, were brilliant. I'm actually going to share some of them because the memes are just crucial. So, you know, this guy gets elected and then everybody, like all the libertarians are thinking like Kid Rock, like, yeah, let's go guns on the shoulder. This meme is so good. And then the sort of idealists think, oh yeah, it's like Christ flipping over the table of the bankers, which is something that we should all be doing and, and not just waiting for Christ to do it. We should all be doing that. But that's the kind of thought that people are having. Oh yeah, this guy, he's going to be the one to stand up to the big banks and all that stuff. Meanwhile, he's a... He's an Israeli file, which is a, a strange thing. You know, he's a, he's a, I'm sure he's Catholic or Christian as a South American. Um, but, uh, you know, what is this Israeli file thing? It's just weird and random. And it just seems like something that's just put there to give you notice. Look at that. Look at, I'm right above the clouds. It, it's, it's pretty much at waist height for me, you guys. I'm in a bit of fog, but above me, it's clear. This is so cool. Um, and, and what is that, right? Um, who are the central bankers primarily? You know, what, what group of people are primarily central bankers? And I would say probably by 99.9%. .9%. You let me know. And so what's that all about? Then we've got photos of him at the World Economic Forum, ha hanging out. You know, he's on the forum. Like, you, you don't get invited to that club um, very easily, you know. And if you do, it's a, it means something. It's, it's quite significant when you've shown up at the World Economic Forum and you sat in there. And then we've got shots of him. And it, I can't 100% verify all this stuff, so take it for what it's worth. Especially this one here with the, him taking the shot. It's like, okay, now you're taking the shot. It almost seems like another form of gaslighting or notice. And the guy's just character in general is so bombastic and over the top. And there's something for me about... God, I'm kind of being a working class guy is when I, when I see guys who spend that much time on their hair, I kind of go, it's kind of gay. Like it's how much time do you spend in the mirror looking at your hair? And yeah, that looks messy, but that's all intentional. That's kind of guys like Russell Brand that do that with their hair. It's yeah, I just kind of look at it. I go, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I got, I got a weird feeling about you. <laughs> and so, so that's it. This is not our guy. This is just another plant. This is just another way to steer you off just a little bit. Because the New World Order, if you read Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope, one thing that he talks about explicitly in that book is how these, these, these people at the elite, who call themselves the elite, they don't care about ideology. 
They really don't. They'll work with Marxists. They'll work with, with fascists. They'll work with capitalists. They'll work with anybody. And they employ all these ide ideologies interchangeably because they're just tools in the tool shed. If you're the one that's above all of that, it's like the Rothschild quote that uh, reads something like, I care not who makes the laws uh, if, I have the, if we have the power to print the money. And that's really what it comes down to. And so when you see a guy like this being an Israeli file, he wants to convert to Judaism. That's just weird. You know, he's got this really gay haircut and he, his, he behaves like a character and he tells you all the things like there's that clip of him and it's quite brilliant. You really wish it was true, but there's that clip of him walking along this whiteboard, peeling off, you know, ministry of this ministry of that. Like that's brilliant, right? That we all want that. Uh, if, if you're a, a libertarian or anarchist, we all want that, right? That's the best. Let's just get rid of these programs, but it's not going to happen. And this is why. This is, in my opinion, take it for what it's worth. This is my gut sense, my feeling with this whole thing, is that this. And, and if if you read economists like Mises and Hayek and and, and and Rothbard and all these guys, they all talk about how the incentive with the state, because of that alone, is that when you get into the state and you now have the ability to dictate what other people are doing, that incentive is the greatest incentive, and so the government will always work to push its own interests. So when people get into the government, well, now they have a, an incentive to work for the interests of the state because it, it, it furthers their own selfish desire. You know, that's one thing that is when people come from sort of a communist or left-leaning position of things, they, and I, I had this myself because I was a leftist for so many years, is you think that the state can transcend human desire that that we can use the state to force benevolence but it is the furthest thing from the truth because the state requires force and the threat of of, of force which is coercion you cannot operate morally because you have to take from somebody to give to another and we all know that governments are involved in money printing as well um, but don't forget that that's also taking because the more the government prints, the more they inflate the currency. And that's part of the situation that we're in right now. And I think partly speaking back to this, this potential psyop of H Javier Millet is that it's a trial balloon for the, for the, for the new world order. It's a, let's just throw this up and let's see if we can get people behind this guy. And then we start repeating their rhetoric because the new world order, all they need to do is steer you off. 0.1% really because it's that that's that few of the people and that few of the ideas that are really the ones that get you through the gates they're the they're the ones that really take you to the next level they don't care about the 99.9% .9 of ideology or what or whatever it is use all of that but just get you slightly off course to miss the big picture and when you see a lot of the red flags that i'm seeing with this guy it just seems so painfully obvious after, you know, we've been through the COVID thing. We've been through the mass gaslighting campaign, the January 6th, the trucker convoy. Now the Israeli Palestine issue. It's just, they've got a lot more ideas and they're going to keep throwing at us, but just, I don't know. That's my thoughts on the matter. It's just another psyop. It's just another thing to derail you from doing your thing, which is, in my opinion, the best way to get through this is you need to become as self-reliant as humanly possible because the state is going to destroy itself. It's almost becoming sort of like the, uh, the parable of Icarus uh, with the wax wings, you know, this idea of, or, 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 or Babel. Um, the Tower of Babel is this idea of trying to be a god is the ultimate uh, pursuit of your own destruction. And, and that's what I see happening. So I think the state will, and look at this, we're, we're above the clouds. We're, we stayed above the clouds. I always thought this was going to sock us in. Wow, this is so cool. I thought it was going to potentially sock us in. But yeah, the state's going to destroy itself. But they're going to try to destroy a lot of other things on the way. And unfortunately, a lot of those things, they still control you by. Because 
you have to kind of think about sovereignty in a scale and there's many forms of sovereignty and i often talk about food water energy shelter but also one of those states of sovereignty is your state within the state who are you what's your capacity how how do you exist in that capacity you know they say uh status standing and capacity there's all these paths to sovereignty but another one and that is our perception what we see and how that affects us how sovereign are you in your perception of the world is it being controlled by somebody else or are you controlling it are you are you using your own eyes because so much of the propaganda today today not in a totally literal sense but almost literally is saying don't trust your lying eyes trust us just like how you know cnn ran that one many piece pieces talking about um don't do your own research you know things like that <laughs> just how ridiculous and absurd it all is but this is another one of those things before we wrap this one up folks i just want to tell you real quick about our freedomfarmers.com black friday sale it's our biggest offer of the year we're selling all access to our entire platform and all the products and services that we have for a one-time payment we only do this offer once a year and it is the best value if you're not already a member so you get access to our community platform and the mapping software and all the tools that we have for members organizing themselves in the flesh we've got all the from the field tv content all the courses that we offer in regenerative agriculture courses that teach you how to make a living and a livelihood on your own land also how to get on the land itself we've also run the homestead accelerator program where every single week i list 10 to 15 properties that are a grade homestead properties these are places that have food water energy shelter there and that you are pretty much turnkey when you get there but we started actually offering B properties and even C properties that had interesting opportunities in them just because our members were asking. So you get access to all that stuff for a one-time payment. I'll make sure to leave a link in the video here or down below in the show notes. Have a blessed day, guys.